Welcome, I'm Michael Baker. Thanks for joining me today as we explore concepts with the objective of improving your management skills and growing your business. Now, by the looks of things, as I stare out at you there, it seems that most of you, at least many of you, have your notepads and your pens ready, so we're gonna get started because I want you to take notes and I want you to make a commitment to yourself that you'll jot down some sort of action item that you can implement in your business today. That's what it's all about. Why are you so angry? Perhaps you're not angry. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you can recall being angry? For me, it was yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, in fact. And that is somewhat ironic. You might think, well, that's what inspired this video. In fact, it did not. I had already decided I was going to talk to you about this. And we had been I guess broaching this subject a few times over the last month with various team members within my organization, the concept of there's no sense in being angry and that we need to reframe those situations which are discouraging, disappointing, frustrating, or those things that anger you. We need to reframe them and look at them as opportunities. Now we've talked about this on this channel at least once or twice before. But this is, a, 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 I think, a topic that we need to address from time to time. As I said, even though we've been talking about it in our organization, I still find, found myself getting angry yesterday. So I hope I don't come across as hypocritical because I'm going to ask you to practice what I preach, not, uh, you know, do as I say, not as I do. But in fact, I'm working with you on this concept. Together, we can try to shift our paradigm surrounding those things which are discouraging. Let's redefine these things and frame them through the lens of what opportunities they can present for us. So I want you to think again, when is the last time that you were, it doesn't have to be angry, but angry for sure, or really discouraged, disappointed, frustrated, something along those lines, especially as it relates to your business. Now, it, it doesn't have to because these concepts apply in your personal life as well as your professional life. But think in your business, when is it that you were most recently very frustrated or angered or something along those lines? And why? Why was it? What I am going to propose to you is that there is absolutely no logic behind it. And in business, we are running a high risk whenever we make decisions based on emotion as opposed to logic. So we want to focus on logic. So that's what we're going to try to do today is we're going to think about the logic behind whether or not anger has any place in your business, discouragement, and how can we use these things as fuel as opposed to these, these emotions that get stirred up in us, how can we recognize them and then use them as fuel to drive our business forward and to become more effective and to outperform the competition? All right, so have you got something in your mind? Do you, have you got an example of a time where you were really discouraged or disappointed, frustrated? And what was the reason? Was it that you were frustrated with a customer? Were you disappointed in one of your team members? Were you upset that a particular piece of equipment broke down? Whatever the situation was, I want you to think about it this way. That is why your business needs you. That is why management exists, is to be able to deal with these situations that are less than ideal. If everything ran really smoothly, you would be unnecessary. And you might think to yourself, well, that's just fine. I would kind of like a break and I would like to have a period of time where I don't have any of these challenges that come up that are so stressful and aggravating. I can appreciate that. And that's what all of our other discussions are on. How, what are those things that cause um, recurring agitation in your business that maybe are symptomatic of other problems that we can solve together? But that is the operative word, solving problems. That's what you do as a manager and that's what makes you necessary. If there was nothing that ever happened that was disappointing or aggravating, if your equipment never broke down, if your process didn't deviate from time to time, if your people always did exactly what they were supposed to do, you wouldn't be necessary. 
And so your security as a manager is dependent on the fact that there are challenges that are going to come up and cause frustration or, or could be frustrating, could be framed as frustrating, but you're not going to be that way. You're going to try to recondition yourself. And that's what this is. We are conditioned to respond a particular way. And when I talk about a paradigm shift, if you actually can accept logically that these things are good for you, that the problems are in fact opportunities and that they are good for you, first of all, logically accept that. Then we can work on the emotional conditioning and you can start over time. This is going to take practice. As I admitted, even though I've been working on this recently and I've actually been, I thought, really effective over the last number of years at checking my emotions and making sure that I govern those things and mitigate against frustrating situations and, and that kind of thing, I have, I still fall back. And we're all, I guess, susceptible to that if we're not careful. And so that just, just told me there's still some triggers in there. There are still some things that I'm conditioned to respond in a certain way. And that's not ideal. I, I don't mind telling you, I have a reputation at least from my youth of being a bit of a hothead. I had a, a bad temper in, in my youth and um, I'm certainly not proud of it, but I was involved in more than just a few physical skirmishes in my day. And uh, I, I like to believe I put all that behind me with both maturity and wisdom and logic. So we're gonna start with the logic and then we're gonna use that logic to be a foundation upon which we can build the conditioning that you need this paradigm shift so that you can use the trigger to trigger something else in you. I want the ideal state. The objective we have at the end of all this is that when something discouraging happens, when something ordinarily would anger you immediately, you're going to pause. You're going to give a little break there before you respond in any way. If you find yourself wanting to raise your voice or send a nasty email, or you just feel those tensions, maybe you're literally temperature is heating up in a meeting and some kind of communication, whatever it is, you're going to pause. And then what your brain is going to do is you're going to say, this is a golden opportunity. This is great. What is going on right now is good. We're frame it from that. And even though it may not be apparent to you at that moment, it usually isn't. You are going to think all I need to do is figure out why this is such a great opportunity. Why did this happen? And I like to break things down when, when those things arise, I like to break them down into two things. How did we end up in this situation in the first place? And how are we going to resolve this? I, I didn't really word that right. What I like to do differentiate the two sort of challenges that are ways that I address each challenge is How are we going to address this specific challenge right now. So maybe there's an upset customer or there's a, a staff situation you got to deal with or whatever. How are we going to address this? And then the second one is how did we get into this situation and what conditions, what can we change in the business to make sure that this doesn't recur because this is not comfortable for anyone. And that's the motivation. So these things are just, again, we're just redefining our terms. It is in fact motivating when you feel those emotions coming up, they can be motivational. They're actually, there are neurotransmitters and all sorts of physiological changes that occur in your body. And you need to make sure that they do not fuel the wrong behaviors. That's what this is all about. So it starts with the paradigm, the logic. Uh, it starts with that mental roadmap where you think, okay, something that is disappointing, something that did not go my way, something's very frustrating, something that otherwise would anger me, in fact, is going to cause me to pause and think, hmm, there's obviously an opportunity here. Now, think about this. Everyone faces these challenges. No matter who you are listening to this, we all have that. And maybe this doesn't seem like such earth shattering uh, advice that I'm giving. It's certainly easier said than done. I can, I can assure you of that. But we can all relate to this because this is a universal problem and your competitors, those other people who might be after the same market as you and those same revenues that you're competing for, those people face those challenges as well. And if you are able to overcome your challenges and your emotions 
to a greater extent than your competition can, you're going to thrive. You're going to beat the competition when you frame things in the through the lens of an opportunity and you use this as fuel and motivation, then you're going to do better than the competition or anyone, any individual who decides that they're going to give in to those emotions and be frustrated. You know, I think it's in Matthew chapter 6, maybe around verse 27 and onward, uh, there's this notion of, uh, forgive me for not having the exact quote, and depending on the translation, it's something along the lines of, which of you through worry can add a cubit to the span of his life? Something along those lines. And we understand that there is, uh, from a Christian perspective, that Jesus was able to use suffering and his passion to redeem the whole world. Now, even if you are a non-believer or you're not spiritual or whatever, you can appreciate that there's something to that because we have expressions like no pain, no gain. And you know that you have to invest in anything. You have to put yourself outside your comfort zone to achieve any sort of return. And people are discussing that it's not a good idea to always look for ways to become more and more comfortable in your life. And that somehow, even though our lives, generally speaking, uh, if you look at this from a historical perspective, generally speaking, people are living more and more comfortable lives. Our standard of living has improved vastly and will continue to. And yet, I think that therefore, people are having discussions more recently that you, you want to go out of your way to give yourself controlled applications of discomfort. And that might be through exercise, you know, there's uh, other cold thermogenesis when people are, there's, there's a whole community of people out there that uh, we we'll talk about the benefits of cold showers, any kind of sort of penance, sacrifice, maybe some kind of mortification. You decide how you want to frame it in your life, but trying to always be comfortable, comfortable, comfortable does not lead to great results. Those people who can, when the um, most intense situations arise, they can handle it because they already have conditioned themselves to be able to suppress the emotional part of things and understand this is going to be for my own good. So that there was a bit of an analogy there and an example. And I wanted to use that because I think it helps you to understand. You go, yeah, you know what? It is true that when I condition myself physically to be able to handle suffering or discomfort, then when other things come along, I'm not so susceptible to breaking down as someone else might be. It's the very same thing in your business when it comes to your emotions and those things which anger you. And I remember having staff throughout the years who would be frustrated at other team members and how they did things wrong and why they didn't follow the policy. And I used to say to them, you know, that's why we employ you. We actually don't need your position. The reason that you have an opportunity to have a job right now is because those people do those frustrating things and we need you to catch those things. And in fact, that is one definition of management. You're a bit of an inspector. You're inspecting what you expect. And in Management 101, we talk about step three and how you have to assume that people who are carrying out the processes to maximize your opportunities are going to fail you in some way. And when we understand that and we accept that, then you can start to go, yeah, so therefore anything, anything whatsoever that's frustrating, anything, any condition, any situation that arises that causes you a little bit of stress is in fact an opportunity. Because this is either, first of all, if it's a one-off, and it's not catastrophic, then no big deal. This is just an opportunity to sort of thicken your skin and to condition you for the next time. If this is a recurring problem, then thank goodness that it occurred and that it's now on your radar and it's uh, garnered your attention because now you can deal with it. You can deal with the immediate situation, but more importantly, you can deal with the situation and refine your processes and innovate in such a way that the situation doesn't recur. And now you have a better business than you had before and possibly a better business than your competition. Most importantly, you as a person are becoming more and more effective. As my team and I have discussed this recently, I say things like, hey, 
Like, let's not get aggravated by this. Somebody, it might be the tone of their voice or a sigh, could be their body language. In some way, somebody indicates to me, I can tell that they're displeased. And I remind them, I say, hey, this is fun. What are we doing this for? We're having fun. This is what separates us from the competition. Our ability to handle these situations where others don't is why people don't do what we do. That provides us an opportunity in the marketplace. And if people do endeavor to do something similar to what we are trying to do and offer in the marketplace, our ability to handle those situations that arise that give you uh, pause and make you want to sigh or be aggravated or whatever, our ability to handle those is what gives us that leg up on our competition. So have fun with it. Every day I want you to think about that is you're a problem solver. Most of your work needs to be done between the ears. You're a thinker. That's what management is. That's what any entrepreneur and business owner needs to do. And if you're aspiring to be in management, then you need to start framing things in that uh, light as well. You need to think of yourself as a problem solver. And without problems, you're useless. There's, there's no need for you. You are a problem solver and problems generally speaking, your, or your opportunities, your opportunity to act as a problem solver will be first indicated by the fact that there's something frustrating that came up. There is a problem. And if you are the type of individual who just immediately you, there is a problem and you're like, Hey, that's what we do. Let's have fun with it. Let's, let's use this as an opportunity. You've already got this handle. Uh, you've already got this handled. You've already got this down. And I would really encourage you to leave some sort of comment that we can all learn from. I'm trying to learn with the rest of you. I'm trying to recondition myself, gain that paradigm shift and have this situation where every time something comes up, I will not allow it to frustrate me. Um, I think when these things are recurring, that's where I get the most frustrated. And I want to share something with you that you might be able to relate to. People closest to me know when I'm really, really upset about something like grr, just stewing about something, almost invariably, it is because I'm upset with myself, no one else. Now I might scapegoat someone, I might outwardly be venting and I shouldn't be doing those things, though I'm, I'm confessing weaknesses to you. But if I'm, you know, citing someone else as the aggravation, I know deep down that the only reason I'm really frustrated about it is I should have put something in place to prevent this. And that's usually when I get most frustrated. So I don't want you to think that every time something comes up, you should have proactively already had the problem dealt with. That's unrealistic. Sometimes you have to react to problems. But when I get frustrated is when it's a recurring problem, something came up and I'm like, I can't believe that person did that. I told them not to do that or whatever. And then it's like, well, you know, management 101, watch that video if you haven't. And, and you know that these things should have been dealt with. You know that they're going to, to come up. And so really you have no one but yourself to blame. And that can be where it's most frustrating. And I've identified this in other people as well. Sometimes a person expresses a little frustration with me and I say, it seems to me you might be more frustrated with yourself because this was predictable and you're expressing this frustration and you know people might be defensive but what we want to do to become more effective and to better ourselves is to suppress those things let's not be defensive let's keep an open mind and think about it each and every time when you get that emotional charge that fuel that starts to boil up in you how are you going to use that use it as motivation to drive your business forward until such time as you become conditioned like pavlov's dog you become conditioned to be excited by the suffering that is uh, that you're about to endure because you know others can't do it as well as you can or because it it represents an opportunity for you to grow in a way that without you would not have been able to grow. That's the concept I wanted to relate. And maybe we'll talk about this a few more times. I think I'm going to leave it at that today because this has come up and it'll probably come up again. I think, I hope you don't dismiss this. I hope that you will look at this and, and ask yourself, do some introspection and ask yourself, how can you develop 
and also share this with your team. You may be really, you might have this handled and you think, oh, well, I didn't learn that much. That's exactly how I respond. But what about your team? Do you have people on your team? Do you have some other stakeholders who you wish that they handled aggravation, anger, disappointment, discouragement, or whatever slightly different? slightly differently than you. Maybe you handle stress really, really well. Someone else in your organization doesn't share this video with them and say, hey, this is sort of the concept that I buy into. I wonder if culturally we could adopt this and maybe get your whole team working on this and share with one another, communicate as a team when these things come up. It's really good to be able to non-defensively call one another out and say, oh, it looks like you're frustrated. Sounds like there's an opportunity there. Have some fun with it, really. Why are we doing this if not to have fun, right? This is the journey. You're in business for a reason and you could be employed instead of self-employed you could be uh, uh, a team member that is uh, employed by someone else who's the manager as opposed to being the manager yourself you've chosen the position that you're in because it represents some problem solving we do things like we solve puzzles and those types of things which challenge our brain because we enjoy them and that's what this role is that's what you're doing that's what business is it's a great big game and let's have some fun with it <laughs> and uh, you can be in games and get frustrated too but that doesn't help you win if you want to win the game you've got to be able to use emotions to fuel you in a way and frame them from the lens of opportunity and how this is a great opportunity for you to improve over the competition. That's where I'm gonna leave it today. I hope you got something out of this. And if you did or if you didn't, I really would appreciate it if you leave a comment that we can all learn from because we need to learn from one another. Perpetual refinement. <laughs>